I know there are days when I make such a connection with nature, like when I walk through the park, I get to smell the trees and watch the leaves dancing in the wind. It's rejuvenating for me. Well, our next guest uses that connection to inspire her artwork, but she just doesn't recreate the beauty of nature. She reconditions what's been wasted and gives it new life. Leah Tomeno is an artist whose work has been exhibited, exhibited in public and private studios. As a painter, she uses colors and canvas, as well as incorporating a collage technique into her pieces. Leah, thank you so much for coming today and for bringing your work with you. You're welcome. So talk to me a little, here we've got a piece, and uh, talk to me a little about what we're seeing and then what makes your process so unique. Uh, well, this is an abstract uh, vision of a tree, an image of a tree. Um, I basically start with a photograph and then work from that in my studio. Um, so you're inspired by what you see in nature. You take a photograph, yes. bring that back to your studio, and then, yes. and then work on it. And we're going to see the process a little bit more later. What's so interesting is, I don't know if you can see this, but there's layers and layers here. And what, are, what material are you using? Um, I begin with grocery store brown bags. So brown paper bags. Brown paper bags. And I, I rip them and glue them onto the canvas. Mm -hmm. And then I paint them and rip the painted bags as well and glue them onto the canvas. So the lighter or the darker colors that you're seeing here are also paper bags that have been painted ahead of time yes, and then ripped yes, into pieces. Yes. And then you've created kind of, well, you've created a, almost a mosaic or a collage yeah. of all of those pieces together here. What's this piece entitled? Uh, this is titled Arboretum. Arboretum? Yes, and it, it was taken at an arboretum. The, the photograph originally was taken at an arboretum. That's beautiful. Let's take a look at your other one. Tell me a little bit. What inspired you to begin using paper bags as a medium? I'm not quite sure. I, I, <laughs> I, I've always used uh, paper. I've always collaged, and I just decided that it might be nice. I, I love the color brown. I wear a lot of brown. And uh, I just decided I might as well try it. It's beautiful. <laughs> now, is this, is this a springtime element we're seeing or this autumn? Is, this is spring. Springtime? At the same arboretum where I took a picture of this. And it was just a beautiful branch. And uh, I'm a little influenced uh, by the Asian art. And so I... Oh, I could see that. I kind yeah. of uh, just tried to give it an Asian feel. Um, so here I made, uh, br I painted the, the dark brown mm -hmm. and the red and the yellow and ripped them and then applied them to the canvas. That's beautiful. I know we've got one of your bigger pieces here. And what I find so interesting is you really are reinventing something that we don't think about, the brown paper bag, in terms of something from a tree yeah, so I'm very interested in the concept of uh, that it started out as a tree and then was made into paper. And, and now, then now you're I'm recreating it into something that, that reflects. In the image of a tree. Um, this, 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 however, is wisteria. Mm -hmm. So it, it's really not a tree here, but it's still going back to nature. Sure, and, sure. And recycling. And again, with all of these different colors of violet, each of these is a separate piece of paper that's been put yes. on there. All of this is brown paper bags, and you just paint it over that. I think that is so neat. Can you show us a little bit of oh, what, sure, uh, what sure. the process is like? Let's maybe move this out of the way real quick. Great, and I can just slide this right over here. And okay. I know you've got some supplies with you. It's just beautiful. Thank you. So what supplies did you bring with you today? Well, I started um, a canvas okay. here. Uh, I, I'd like to show you that you should always, I take care to cover the edges because just in case I don't want to frame it or if I can't. Yeah, because they do look beautiful. I know you have these two framed, but this one back here wasn't. That's that, beautiful. And then, and then I will end up collaging on, on the sides. Under the edges. So that it doesn't need to and be And so what up. we've got here is what you're seeing in the white is actually the black, blank canvas underneath. So, you know, we may not have your talent or your artistry. It's still something neat and very able for us to even try it at home. I think, I think it's it a very home. simple process. I, I do teach, and I've had middle school kids do this 
as an art project. So, oh, great. Well, show us a little bit. So I, I dampen, I, after I rip the bag, I dampen it. Okay. And I brush that on. Mm -hmm. I may be dripping here a little bit. Oh, that's okay. I hope I don't. And then I apply the wet bag. And it's those layers that create the shading that, yes, you, that you see? Yes. Well, this will dry to be mm -hmm. this, this this value, color. yeah. Beautiful. And then you have, when, when you're dealing with a painted bag, is it the same type of process? And it's the same process. Um, and you paint the bag ahead of time? I, I do. Oh, I, you brought, a, I brought, I brought right. some examples. I, I paint, uh, you know, these are just from other trees that I've done. Mm -hmm. So I, I paint the bag. Rip and it then I rip the it. Pieces. And if I want to have this edge here, mm -hmm. like you can see there's an edge. And if that, uh, maybe, maybe on the branch you can mm -hmm. see that... The, there are, there's areas here on the smaller painting you can, where... You can see where the, where the rip is, it kind of adds the shadow a and the light effect. and the texture. Yes. That's beautiful. So. I know initially you were contact, contacting a lot of different museums and a lot of different galleries. Yes. And primarily the feedback you were getting was rejection. <laughs> so uh, I, I always saved all my rejection letters uh, just so that I knew who to not send to again. Uh, or maybe five years down the road. I would send a different body of work to them. Maybe they would like that better. Um, but then I decided that I would, I, I wanted to get rid of these rejection letters because maybe it was too negative. Maybe this, you know, too negative of a spiritual having, a hangover having it in my files. So I emptied my files and I put all my rejection letters everywhere on the background. This, this one is the second one in that series. The first one was made from gallery rejection letters. And then the funny thing was that I got accepted into a gallery after that. <laughs> after uh, making that piece with the yes. rejection letters, a gallery accepted, accepted me. So now I'm making a piece with museum rejection letters, and maybe a museum will <laughs> accept me as well. So I don't know if you can see, but she actually used the rejection letters similar in the way she was showing this with the paper bag. And those are the background. That's the background. And I can see the signatures. I can see the text in the background. And then did you use the brown paper bag to create and, the, Yes. So this is the all image of the, the tree? brown paper bag, the shadow, and the tree, and the leaves. And now for the blossoms, this is an apple tree. Mm -hmm. And they generally have white blossoms. Mm -hmm. So I'm using white paper bags for the white blossoms. And the white, white believe it or not, white paper bags come in different Different values of white, yeah. Really? So, 